Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your October 2018 general readings. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Welcome to any newcomers. Thank you always for uh, continuing to follow, share, like, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, always a thank you to all of my clients out there, regular and new, for keeping me so busy uh, wherever I am uh, with personal one-on-one -on -one readings. If any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can get more information and my contact details by uh, going to my YouTube channel and clicking on the little About button there. Or you can click on the description bar of any of the videos I post uh, and that will give you the same information. You can email me directly at Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to work with you. And uh, turnaround time is pretty fast as I do readings full time, five to six days a week. It is what I do. I do a wide variety of readings in all areas of life. So if you're interested, send me an email and uh, we will go from there. You can also find me on the smartphone app Instant Go under Irish Gypsy, and that link is also provided. All right, let's move right into this reading. This is for the fire sign of Leo for the month of October 2018. <coughs> Make sure to check your rising and your moon sign videos as well if you know them. Uh, they can provide more additional insight. Uh, general readings always resonate a little differently for everybody watching. Forgive my hoarseness, I'm just uh, recovering from a bit of a cold. Uh, I am recording these in the end at the last few days of September. I am still in Europe, but by the time you see these at the beginning of October, I will be back home in California. All right, Leo, let's see what the month of October 2018 has in store for you. <coughs> We begin around the first week with the Three of Cups and the Nine of Wands. Next we have the Four of Pentacles and Death. We have the Devil and the King of Wands. And the Six of Cups followed by the Nine of Cups and from the bottom of the deck your overall energy and guidance and focus for the month of October 2018 is the Eight of Cups. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, Leo, it looks like you are in the middle of transitioning from something and maybe some of you may be having some struggles uh, with something that is coming to an end or has come to an end. Uh, you may be having some struggles like letting go of something, but it does look like you are transitioning through something. Uh, well, because your overall energy from the bottom of the deck is the Eight of Cups. This is a card of leaving something behind. Sometimes this card uh, represents leaving something behind that has left you with a feeling of uh, disappointment or disillusionment, perhaps something that hasn't uh, worked out well. Uh, and you may not be entirely sure what lies ahead if you leave this certain situation, because as you can see, whoops, boy, it jumped right out of my hands. <laughs> Maybe some of you are having a lot of time, a lot of a hard time uh, leaving something behind. You can see that this man has turned his back on what these cups represent. Uh, he's dressed for travel. He's got his hat on, his cloak on, his hat on, his walking staff in his hand. Uh, he may not be entirely sure in which direction he's going because he's still kind of surveying the horizon, but he has turned his back on what these cups represent, uh, which is a sense of something maybe not having worked out. Something has simply run its course. There's a sense of disappointment and disillusionment, so he's made up his mind to turn his back and leave something, leave something behind. Some of you you know, general readings, they can always resonate a little differently because there's so many of you watching and everybody has different things going on in their lives. Uh, some of you, I, I feel like a lot of you maybe are actually in the middle of contemplating uh, leaving something behind. I feel like some of you are vacillating between one thing and another. I think maybe some, uh, some days you may feel like, you know, this isn't working for me. I need to leave it behind. Maybe this is coming to him. Maybe this is just, I just need to leave this behind, whether it's a relationship, a situation, maybe a, a job or a work situation as well. For some of you, it might be in the realm of spirituality. Uh, and some of you are making a physical decision to leave something behind, uh, a decision to leave something behind in a physical way. Some of you may be actually around the end of September, the beginning of October, um, 
actually moving away from something or traveling and leaving something or someone behind you as well. Let's take a look at your elemental energy here for the month. We have one, two, three, four cups, uh, two wands, one pentacle, and two major arcana cards. <coughs> So you have more water energy than anything else, which in the tarot is emotional energy. It's the energy of emotions, feelings, and also the area of our life that deals with relationships as well. Uh, and wands, which is about, uh, you know, it's artistic, creative energy, but it's action-oriented energy. Uh, but I feel like it's kind of a transitional place for you, particularly with some of you may have been stuck. I feel like there is movement forward. And again, for some of you, I feel like that's physical movement as well. So around the beginning of the month or so, we have the Three of Cups and the Nine of Wands. The Three of Cups is a card that represents uh, having a good time. Some of you may be being a bit more social uh, towards the end of September, beginning of October. It's the card of being with people that you feel connected with, that you have a connection with. Uh, it's also a card that represents community in a positive way, uh, enjoying the time that you spend with people. And again, some of you that are um, leaving one place to go to another, uh, uh, you may be, it, it looks like in terms of travel, um, you're going to a place or returning to a place uh, to relationship and emotional connections that you already have, that you've already put a lot of history and work into, and you're really going to uh, be enjoying reuniting with these people. And for others of you, it, it just represents that this may be a higher social time for you. Uh, you may be going out and being with friends more or enjoying uh, the connections you have in your community. Now, clarifying the Three of Cups is the Nine of Wands. This is the card that can represent feeling like you've had a bit of a setback or a delay or an obstacle or hurdle uh, at uh, maybe at the 11th hour. I do call it my 11th hour card. It's darkest before dawn. You can see that the uh, this group of wands that this man has turned away from uh, represents uh, some kind of maybe delay or obstacle or hurdle that he's run into unexpectedly. Uh, just when he was uh, uh, feeling like he was at the end of his journey, this man is a soldier and he's fought uh, a lot of battles. And, uh, and the tarot tends to represent completion, being at the end of something. So the nine represents being very close close to a cycle completing itself. And again, I feel that kind of transitional energy of maybe something feeling like something is coming to an end or is meant to come to an end. There may be some resistance there as well. This is the card also about pushing through. Almost always this card is accompanied with the advice about push through. It's always darkest before dawn. Uh, the end is right around the corner, even if you can't see it or not, even though you may be feeling a bit discouraged, uh, maybe a bit taken aback or let down in some way. So, <clears throat> and again, I feel like there's this undercurrent uh, of something going on for you, which has been in a stuck place for you, Leo, uh, whether it's been in a relationship. And by relationship, that can not only include romantic relationships, it can it includes relationships of all kinds, with family, with friends, at work as well. Uh, but I feel like the connections that you have with friends within your community and your social groups are going to be helping you kind of through this time as well. Uh, some of you in an active, you know, sharing with friends or, or, or the people that you feel closest with, or even in a way that kind of distracts you from this undercurrent of something else that's going on. Now, next to that, we have the Four of Pentacles and Death. This is around the second week or so of October. But as I always say, time is kind of fluid. And general readings, this might be a little earlier for some of you, a little later for others of you. So the Four of Pentacles is a card about holding on, sometimes holding on very tightly uh, to what you have. Uh, and I see this card come up often for people who have... Uh, lost a lot uh, in their life or in their past and they cling very tightly to what they have left because you know they don't want to lose anything else. It can also represent in an emotional way being um, maybe closed off or guarded or being very defensive and, and wanting to hold on uh, to what you have or to hold on to something that you do have. Now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I'm getting, I'm at the tail end of my cold, but I still have that horse raspy thing going on. So forgive me if I sound like a frog. So, um, what clarifies the Four of Pentacles, which is interesting, is death or transformation. Now, death is a card that represents endings and pretty significant endings. And usually when death comes up, when I see death comes up, it represents 
that whatever is ending or needs to come to an end, um, it's usually something that's old or something that's been there for some time. Death represents the clearing out and clearing away in a pretty major way because this is a, a major arcana card, so significant energies here. Uh, divine timing and orchestration too. Death represents that something needs to come to an end uh, once and for all. Uh, so that something new can uh, come after it because in the seeds of every ending or in the in every ending lies the seeds of the next thing that a new beginning birth follows death uh, 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 life follows death birth follows death that's just the way that it happens so for some of you it can represent a complete something completely needing to end meaning you need to leave it leave it or the situation or the relationship completely behind for others of you something about it needs to come to an end a way that you have of operating perhaps within a relationship or or uh, in a work environment uh, and it needs to transition into something else but it feels like there's resistance here because the four of pentacles represents holding on to something or not wanting to let something go or not being willing to let something go in order for a transformation to happen and death represents that something actually in fact needs to be let go of and again because this is a general reading it's going to vary for everybody out there but it looks like there's some resistance and some reluctance to uh to letting something go or being willing to walk away and let something go uh, in order for a transformation to happen in your life. For some of you, I feel this is going to be relationship oriented, whether it's a romantic relationship or a friendship relationship, a way that you have of operating, being willing to let something go or let the way that you're going about it go um, because a transformation needs to happen. Some of you, you may, it may be a relationship that's been around for a while, a karmic relationship, because I do feel like there's this karmic tie there. Uh, and perhaps some of you may have, you know, had some insights about this lately. You've grown a lot. You've done a lot of work on yourself and it's actually time. This relationship or situation has run its course and it's time for you to move on from that. But uh, because there's a lot of emotion involved in it, there's this reluctance or resistance to to either let it go or to step away from it. Uh, sometimes it means that in a relationship which isn't going the way that we want it to or a situation, you know, work or otherwise that isn't going the way that we want to, we have to be willing to move away from it or walk away from it um, and actually begin to actually walk away from it. Uh, sometimes it means that we leave it behind completely and sometimes it, it means that the action of leaving it behind or walking away from it can actually transform it into something new or something better. So it gets, just kind of depends on which side that you're on. But it looks like maybe around the second week or the middle of the month or so, there is this kind of struggle and resistance um, with letting something go. And there's this undercurrent kind of running through the entire month of uh, you know, letting something go, not letting something go, struggling with it. What happens if I do, uh, 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 will, like if it's a relationship and, and I'm, you know, saying, okay, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm leaving. Will that transform the relationship and what I want? Or does that mean that it just completely ends? The point is, I feel like spirit is saying that you're not knowing the outcome is actually important because you have to be, it looks like this is one of those learning curves. Leo, that you have to be willing to make a stand or draw a line in the sand and go whether or not, uh, you know, I need to, if this doesn't transform, I'm leaving. Whether or not this transforms or not, you have to be willing to do that and take whatever happens because what you're in has is not satisfying. It's run its course. You've learned your lessons and you need to move on to the next thing. Um, whether or not that may transform the relationship or the situation, um, looks to be unknown right now, but it looks like you, Spirit is wanting you to think about what's best for you in your path and in your future moving forward and act on that regardless of what it does to what you may be leaving behind. But again, there's this reluctance and resistance, which there always is when change comes around and we don't want to let go of something or we're afraid to make a stand in something because we're afraid that it might mean that we lose it. Uh, and it may or it may not, but the point is, is that at, certain, at a certain point, um, the fear of, uh, the fear of what, 
may not change in staying becomes greater than the fear of the unknown. So that's when we move into the unknown into our future. And I feel like that's what spirit's directing you to do. Now, next to that, we have the devil and the king of wands. And again, this feels a bit more relationship oriented, but this also could be a, a, a certain job situation, a job itself or a career path itself uh, that you may be, that may be unsatisfactory. Uh, you know, it may not be going the way that you want to. You may have had disappointments after disappointments after disappointments, but you cling to this job or this work environment or this career path because um, you're, you're afraid to walk away because you're afraid maybe you won't be able to get something else or you won't be able to get something better. Um, whether or not it resonates in the work situation area of your life, like the pentacles, earth energy, or whether it's purely in the relationship personal area of your life, the energy fundamentally remains the same. So around the third week or so, we have the devil and the king of wands. So the devil is a card of imbalance, fundamental profound significant imbalance the scales being out of whack and that can represent a variety of things it can represent addictions uh, the devil can be the classic card for addictions drugs alcohol or other types of addictions workaholic uh, it can represent negative or toxic relationships or relationships that have some kind of imbalance in it maybe too much uh, uh, control uh, controlling energy obsessive energy uh, codependent energy um, it, uh, and uh, the actual, the fundamental definition of the devil is that there's too much attention and focus in one area to the harm and detriment and exclusion of all others. That's what it means that things are out of balance, out of whack. Now, what clarifies it is the king of wands. Uh, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, person, sun, moon are rising, showing up as a male, as a king, but it could be a female as well. For some of you, this may resonate simply as you. Uh, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius energy. Uh, and this is reading us for Leo. It can represent you kind of going through this 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 major imbalance period. And again, I feel like it's related to whatever it is that you're having difficulty letting go of or being absolutely willing to let go of in order for transformation to occur, uh, regardless of whether you lose it permanently or not. Um, and the devil represents definitely, you know, can, some of you may be seesawing from one end to the other. You know, some of you, you may also be dealing with another um, a fire sign individual or somebody with a lot of fire in their natal chart, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius energy, somebody who's manifesting as the king of wands, which would be a, a textbook, you know, a classical uh, fire sign person, energetic, dynamic. Um, it could be that you might be dealing with um, another uh, a fire sign person or someone who's manifesting as the king of wands who's going through an extremely imbalanced uh, time in their life. They might be dealing with uh, addictions or mental health issues as well. Um, and it could be that you are in, involved in a relationship with someone who's manifesting as the king of wands and the relationship itself is going through an imbalanced period or it's definitely... Uh, uh, you know, not the harmonious kind of relationship that you want, regardless of the nature of the relationship or the situation. So some of you, it's going to be a, a, a relationship that you have with another person specifically. And some of you uh, for whom this might be a job or workplace situation or career path situation, uh, um, or even within a circle of friends or a friendship too. there's a sense of there's a, a, a strong sense of imbalance here um, and again for some of you I feel like uh, this is a, a relationship or a situation which really is no longer good for you and it's causing a lot of inner turmoil for you and it has from time to time over a long period of time and I feel like it's karmic because you you grew and evolved quite a bit from this and and through this relationship or situation as is the case with life uh, you've learned some painful lessons but they've been valuable lessons as well some of you I really feel like you know, this is a situation, a relationship you, you really need to transition through and it's kind of going through its last dying throes and you're having difficulty doing that. So there's this back and forth energy. 
Others of you, it may not be that the situation or relationship will be left completely behind, but I feel like, again, Spirit is urging you to let go of the, th the fear of what happens if you disengage from it um, and move forward. And for some of you, it might transform the relationship or the situation itself, meaning that the, you know, it, it might prompt the other person or the other side of the story to reevaluate where they're coming from. Um, you know, perhaps they're not valuing you or seeing you in the way that you would like them to, and you're actually saying, okay, this is it, I'm leaving, um, or I can't deal with this anymore, so I'm actually removing myself, may in fact cause or, or uh, you know, a transformation uh, to happen. Um, it, again, it's not clear right now, and I feel like the outcome is not clear, and that in and of itself is an important learning lesson as well, because it's, it's what you do in this decision-making period uh, that's going to be important to this process that you're going through. And again, I feel like the people around you, the people that really truly love and care about you, friends, family, and community, are going to be really important and even invaluable uh, uh, source of comfort, of advice, uh, um, and of help to you through this process. And that's how we actually end the month with the Six of Cups and the Nine of Cups, so more emotional energy here. The Six of Cups is a card uh, uh, that's primarily associated with the past, history, roots of origin, parents, relatives, old friends, uh, uh, you know, childhood. It can represent also travel back to see friends and family or, or relatives. Um, but it represents, I think for the majority of you, it represents people, relationships, and a time uh, that has the weight of history behind it, you know, old friends or community that you've been in for quite some time, if not actual friends, family, relatives. Um, you can see that uh, uh, on the Six of Cups uh, are two children playing in this beautiful, lovely environment, which inspires feelings, nostalgic feelings of, you know, happy childhood or, or times where uh, we felt more carefree and didn't have the worries and concerns that, you know, we often carry in our adult life as well. So kind of that general sort of feeling. And it's clarified by the Nine of Cups, which is, you know, considered uh, the wish fulfillment card, the card about your cups overflowing, abundance, uh, uh, feeling a sense of, of, of overflowing happiness and, and abundance and, and, and luxury as well. Sometimes called the winning the lottery card. Some of you may be uh, having a sense of of abundance or a win or a big recognition or promotion at work um, as well. And you may be celebrating that uh, with friends and family towards the end of the month, which is interesting because it's how we enter the month. And again, I feel like the last few months, if not longer than that, there's been a situation which may has, have go has been going through growing pains and there's been some stuck areas. And I feel like things are, are moving forward. Um, and that stuck feeling is gradually, uh, is actually dissipating and, and you're moving forward. Um, and there's a sense of, of a natural energy going to the next phase, whatever that next phase is. I just feel like for some of you, um, throughout the month of October, the challenge is in, um, you know, in letting go and stepping back from something which uh, is not good for you anymore or that you simply learned your lessons from. Uh, whether it's relationship or job or work path uh, or a circle of friends. I feel like for a small of you, I keep getting a social circle that may be uh, a, a small social circle or a set of friends that you're meant to move on from. You've transitioned or elevated yourself kind of beyond where they're at in terms of common interests. Um, because when we're meant to move on from a situation or relationship, uh, whether permanently or to make it transform, and we don't, it's never really the same after that. There's never, there's always this sense of internal conflict. And I feel like some of you are really struggling with that, but that spirit is kind of pushing you. That conflict is coming from spirit wanting to push you to the next level, whatever that means for you. And I feel like advice here too is to uh, reach out to the people that know you best for support, for comfort, for advice, and also for uh, distraction as well. Um, it feels like where it's going to feel the best for you is with people that you have uh, a history with outside of this 
uh, this situation or relationship, whatever the devil represents uh, for you. And it's going to be different for, for everybody in the general reading. Uh, so I feel like what the situation has been kind of building and now we're kind of at this, uh, okay, it's time to uh, leave or transform it one way or another. And that seems to be what's going on for uh, the majority of, uh, of October, uh, but some lovely bright points that are connected with your social life and uh, with being around people uh, that make you feel good or that you feel connected with, particularly people you have a history with. So don't isolate this month. This is not a month to isolate. This is a month to really stay in contact uh, with those people and with your community, Leo. So Leo, that pretty much wraps up your October 2018 general reading. I hope that uh, uh, you found it helpful. Again, if any of you are interested in a more personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can go to my YouTube channel's homepage and click on the little about button, or you can click on the description bar of all the videos I post. Please feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. Turnaround time for personal readings is pretty fast. I can usually get back to you within uh, the first 24 hours of your initial contact with more information, and scheduling can be anywhere from a few days upwards of a couple of weeks. But almost always within a two-week period of time or so, we can set up a reading for you live or recorded. I do love and romance, of course, career work and finance, investment readings, uh, channeled messages from past on loved ones. And I also do six and 12 month overviews, which take a look at what's coming in your life over a six or 12 month period of time, depending on how far away, uh, how far ahead you want to look, as well as compatibility chartings uh, for people and reconciliation uh, uh, spreads as well. So I will see you all again in a couple of weeks, Leo, for the October 2000, I almost said August, <laughs> for the October 2018 mid-month readings. And until then, as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a happy life. Take care and I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.